Sabay-sabay tayong makinig, mag-aral at matuto dito sa Radyo Aralan sa Naga Season 2. Hatid sa inyo ng Department of Education, Naga City Division at Brigada 103.1 News FM, Naga City, the Music and News Authority. Makakasama ang inyong mga radio teachers sa isang mabisang talakayan ng mga lesson episodes na tiyak na inyong magugustuhan. Lunas hanggang biyernes, Alas 3 hanggang alas 4 ng hapon dito sa Radyo Aralan sa Naga Season 2. Sulong, Idokalidad. Good day, Bicolandia! Today is December 1 and it's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. How are you doing today? Hope that all of you are doing great! Let me first greet our very supportive Schools Division Superintendent, Sir Mariana B. De Guzman, Cesa 6, our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Cecil Ferro, CID Chief, Dr. Annalisa Abulok, SGOD Chief, Dr. Renato Gavino, Education Supervisor of Science, Ma'am Maria Belen Lucha, The Public Schools District Supervisor of Naga District 5, Sir Dante R. Santilices, our School Principal, Ma'am Esmeralda B. De Los Reyes, together with the teachers and staff of Triangulo Elementary School, 
and host of, of Radio Aralan Sanaga Season 2, headed by Sir John Tomotorgo. To our dear viewers, listeners, parents, and students, welcome to another edition of our discussion online and on air at 103.1 Brigada News FM Naga and live streaming on official page of Radio Aralan Sanaga. This is Teacher Manette, your radio host for today from Triangulo Elementary School. Science is a way of life. It is a process that takes us from confusion to understanding in a manner that's precise, predictive, and reliable. Grade 4 and Grade 5 pupils, let us all be ready to this fun film episode of Radio Aralan Sanaga in the world of science. Science 4 objective is to identify the specialized structure of terrestrial and aquatic plants from quarter 2 week 4 lesson to be discussed by teacher Ingrid V. Cipriaso and for science 5 describe the different modes of reproduction in animals such as butterflies, mosquitoes, frogs, cats, and dogs from quarter two, week three lesson to be discussed by teacher Mary Joyce T. Paniban. Before we start, our dear pupils, I want you to prepare all the materials needed for our discussion. Your module, your notebook, and ball pen. Make sure that you are in your most comfortable place while listening to the radio or watching online. If you can't understand some terms, ask the help of your parents, Lolo, Lola, Ates, and Kuyas. Stay tuned until the end of the discussion and pay attention. Be ready to want exciting discussion about the specialized structure of terrestrial and aquatic plants to be discussed by our first radio teacher, Teacher Ingrid V. Cipriazo. Hello kids! Good afternoon! Welcome to a fun and exciting learning episode for Science 4. I am teacher Ingrid Valencia Cipriaso from Triangulo Elementary School, your radio teacher. I hope that you are doing great today. Before we start our lesson, make sure kids that you have your notebook, your pen, and your science module for quarter two, week four. Today, we are going to talk about specialized structures of terrestrial and aquatic plants. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify the specialized structures of terrestrial and aquatic plants. Before we go on with our lesson, let us have a game first. Are you ready? Great! We are going to play a game called Mystery Plant, wherein I will describe the plant and you are going to guess what plant is it. I will give you 5 seconds to guess and whoever gives the first correct answer by leaving a comment on our Facebook Live or sending a text message to this number 090-7573 8439. Again, 090 You will be given a load of 100 pesos. Are you excited? Yay! Great! Well, let's start. The first mystery plant. It lives in a garden, it has a trumpet-shaped flower, and with a wide red colored petals, and it may also be in color white, pink, 
orange, peach, yellow, and purple. What plant is it? If your answer is gumamela, then you are correct. The second mystery plant. This plant can be found around the edge of lakes or in small ponds. It has light spongy stalks that enables to float in the water. What plant is it? Fantastic! You got the correct answer. It is water lily. The third mystery plant. It is one of the largest tree in the world grown for its superior quality wood. It is also considered as the Philippine national tree. What plant is it? If your answer is Nara, you are right. Fourth mystery plant. It is a color green vegetable and it has a bitter taste but nutritious. What plant is it? If you answered Ampalaya, then you're absolutely correct. The last one. The fruit of this tree have a hard shell and sweet, and with white flesh inside. People call this as a tree of life because all of its parts can be used for different purposes. What plant is it? Very good! The answer is coconut tree. I hope you got it all correct and figure out all the answers to our mystery plant game. As I promised, I will give a 100 peso load to the first person to comment or text the correct answer to each mystery plant. The plants that we have identified from the mystery plant game are examples of terrestrial and aquatic plants. And that is our lesson for today. The specialized structures of terrestrial and aquatic plants. And we will learn more as we go on with our lesson. But before that, let us have a short review of our previous lesson. In our previous lesson, we have learned about the body structures that help animals adapt and survive in their particular habitat. Their unique body structures enable them to live either in land or in water. Just like animals, plants have their own characteristics too. Plants differ from each other from size, shape, texture, or even color and where it particularly grows. So now, let's focus on our lesson by first unlocking words that we will encounter so that it will be easier for you to understand as we go on with our topic. Let's start with the word specialized structures. It is a special part of plants that will make them adapt to the kind of habitat they live in and acquire their basic needs while protecting themselves against predators. Second, the terrestrial plants. These are plants that grow on land. Third, the aquatic plants. These are plants that grow on water. Fourth, submerged aquatic plant. These are plants having all or almost all of the plants growing underwater. Again, these are plants having all or almost all of the plants growing underwater. And the last, the immersed aquatic plants. These are plants having all or most all of the plants grow out of the water. Again, 
these are plants having all or almost all of the plants grow out of the water. Those are the words that we need to know and understand as we go on with the lesson. Different organisms have developed unique structures that perform these functions and that do so in ways that fit their specific environments. So in this case, the structures are specialized to perform a specific function and in order to adapt to their environment. So what are the specialized structures of a plant? The specialized structures of some plants are their fruits, flowers, stem, leaves, and roots. Those are called specialized structures because it is their unique characteristics that helps them to adapt and survive to the habitat where they in. Here are some examples of plants with their specialized structures. The first plant are the marang and durian. Their specialized structures are their fruits. They have fruits with pungent odor. And the second plant is the kalumpang tree. The specialized structure of it is its flower. It is noted for unpleasant smell of flowers, yet attract flies to pollinate. The third plant is the bird of paradise. The specialized structure of it is its leaves. It has a thick cuticle on its leaves that filters strong light and guards against excessive water loss. The fourth plant is the talahib grass or kugun. The specialized structure of it is its leaf. It has a sharp leaf that might cause you harm. Fifth is the pineapple plant. The specialized structure of it is its leaves. It has pines on their leaves that serves as the base of the fruit. Sixth, the cactus. The specialized structure of it are its stem and leaves. It has fleshy stem and leaves that helps to conserve water for a long time. Seven, the citrus plants. The specialized structure of it are its leaves and fruits. Their leaves and fruits have strong smelling oils that have a pleasant taste to prevent it from being eaten. And the last example is the water hyacinth. The specialized structure of it is its roots. It has a long roots to reach the soil under water. Those are some examples of plants with their specialized structures. Now, we are going to learn about the two types of plants. The two types of plants are the terrestrial plants and aquatic plants. We know that terrestrial plants are plants that grow on land. Some terrestrial plants are small, while others are big. There are terrestrial plants with big trunk, while others have soft stem. Other plants bear flowers, while others do not. Some terrestrial plants grow directly on soil, while others grow on rocks. There are terrestrial plants that cling on the fence, while most of them are found in the fields. Here are some examples of terrestrial plants. The cactus, talahib grass, banana tree, and coconut tree. And now, let's proceed to the other types of plants which are the aquatic plants. These are plants that have adapted to living within aquatic environments. They are also referred to as hydrophytes. Aquatic plants can only grow in water or in soil that is permanently saturated or submerged in water. There are also two classifications of aquatic plant. The first one is the submerged aquatic plant. Examples of it are 
eelgrass, sago pondweed, and water meal foils. These are plants having all or almost all of the plants growing underwater. And the second classification of aquatic plant is the immersed aquatic plants. Examples of it are wheatland iris, skunk cabbage, and cattails. These are plants having all or most all of the plants grow out of the water. To summarize, plants have two types, terrestrial and aquatic plants. Under aquatic plants, we have two classifications, which are submerged and immersed plants. And all of the plants have their own unique characteristics that they use in order to adapt and survive in their environment. That is called a specialized structure. It can be their fruits, flowers, leaves, stems, and roots. Now, let's try to answer our activity. Direction. What part of the following plants is specialized? Write if it is the roots, leaves, stem, flower, or fruit. Write your answer in your answer sheets. Number one, bugambilia. Number two, rose. Number three, euphorbia. Number four, gabi. Number five, water hyacinth. Number six, radish. Number seven, potato. Number eight, banana. Number nine, cactus. And number ten, camote. Are you done? Great! Let's check if your answers are correct. Number one. For bugambilia, the correct answer is stem. Number two, for rose, the correct answer is flowers. Number three, for euphorbia, the correct answer is stem. Number four, for gabi, the correct answer is roots. And for number five, for water hyacinth, the correct answer is roots. Number six, for radish, the correct answer is roots. Number seven, for potato, the correct answer is roots. Number eight, for banana, the correct answer is fruits. Number nine, for cactus. The correct answer is leaves. And for number 10, for camote, the correct answer is roots. I hope you got all the correct answers. For those who got a score of 8 to 10, you are very good. For scores 5 to 7, you are good. And for those who got 4 and below, Cheer up! You can still study this lesson and have a better score next time. Today, we have learned about what specialized structure is, identify the specialized structure in plants, and the two types of plants, which are the terrestrial and aquatic plants, their classifications, and examples. Now, we are done studying our lesson. Congratulations, kids! I hope you had fun and learned a lot today. Once again, I am Teacher Ingrid Valencia Cepriaso, your radio teacher from Triangulo Elementary School. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned on our next episode tomorrow at same time. Keep safe. Bye-bye! Wow! 
That was an amazing discussion, Teacher Ingrid. We have learned that the structure of terrestrial and aquatic plants are specialized to perform a specific function in order to adapt in their environment. For sure, you clearly understood the topic. I know you are all excited to know the winners during the preliminary game on guessing game of Mystery Plants. We will just send a message to the winners for your prize. Thank you so much to all the listeners and viewers who are still with us. Hope that you will be with us until the end of the next discussion. Our next interesting topic is about the different modes of reproduction in animals such as butterflies, mosquitoes, frogs, cats, and dogs. All ears to our second radio teacher, Teacher Mary Joyce T. Paniban. Have you ever tried to ask where the animals came from and how they grow in numbers? Very good! Cats, dogs, frogs, birds, and fishes produce babies of their kind. Isn't it amazing? Correct! It is really amazing! Good morning, kids! Welcome to our new episode. I'm Mary Joyce T. Panganiban, your radio teacher for today. Last week, we talked about menstrual cycle and how it helps in human reproduction. Today, our learning competency is to describe the different modes of reproduction in animals such as butterflies, mosquitoes, frogs, cats, and dogs. I am excited to teach you this lesson. Do you have now your ballpen and learning modules? That's great! You're now ready to our discussion. Let's now start! For this episode, our learning objectives are the following. First, identify ways on how animals reproduce. Second, distinguish animals that undergo a sexual reproduction. Third, explain the importance of reproduction in animals and its relationship to extinction. Let's first have a game for our pretest. This is called Sci-Par Terms. All you need to do is to complete the letters of the term being described in the statement. Are you now ready? That's great! Number one, it is a type of reproduction in which the offspring is from a single cell or from a multicellular organism and inherits the genes of the parent. The word starts with letter A and it has seven letters. What is it? You're right! The answer is asexual. Number two, it is a type of asexual reproduction in which a new organism develops from an outgrowth of bud. It has seven letters that starts with letter B. What is it? Correct! The answer is budding. Number three, it is the production of one living organism by combining genetic information from two individuals of different types. It has six letters that starts with letter S. What is it? You get the correct answer. It's sexual. Number four. It takes place when a sperm cell unites with the egg cell. It has 13 letters that starts with letter F. What is it? Amazing! You get the correct answer. It's fertilization. 
Last number. It is the fertilized egg which develops into an embryo. It has six letters that starts with letter Z. What is it? Very good! The answer is zygote. Did you enjoy and get the correct answers? I'm glad you did it! If not, it's okay. We are going to learn more about this. I have here two groups of pictures of animals. What do you think are their similarity and differences? In box A includes chicken, turtle, and frogs. In box B includes cats, pigs, and whales. What is their similarity? Yes, you're right. What group of animals can give birth to its young? How about their differences? Correct! Group A lay eggs while animals in group B are born alive. Animals are born in different ways. Some animals are egg-laying while some are born alive. Egg-laying animals are animals that lay eggs to the environment and are developed outside the body. The time between the laying of the egg and the hatching of the young is called incubation period. Examples of these animals are birds, snakes, frogs, turtles, lizards, and insects. Some animals retain and nourish the fertilized egg inside the body of the female parent. The fertilized egg develops into an embryo that grows while receiving the nourishment from the mother through the placenta. The time between fertilization and birth of the live young is called gestation. Animals that undergo this process are born alive. How familiar are you with the animals? Fantastic! We are now going to proceed to our next activity. You are going to tell if the animal is egg-laying or born alive. Are you now ready? And that's good! Number 1. Alligator The answer is egg laying. Number two, bear. The answer is born alive. Number three, cat. The answer is born alive. Number four, dog. The answer is born alive. Number five, fish. The answer is egg laying. Congratulations for completing the task. Reproduction is a biological process by which new individuals are produced by parents. This process ensures the continuation of similar kinds of individuals generation after generation. The known methods of reproduction are broadly grouped into main types, sexual and asexual. Animals that produce a new individual which involves two parents is called sexual reproduction. This takes place when a sperm cell unites with the egg cell, which is called fertilization. The fertilized egg is called zygote, which develops into an embryo. 
the embryo undergoes continuous development until it eventually grows into a newborn animal. Fertilization in animals may be internal or external. Internal fertilization happens when the male animal releases sperm cells into the body of the female animal to fertilize the egg cell. The embryo can either develop inside the female body until it is born alive or develop inside an egg laid by the female. Insects, birds, cats, and cows undergo internal fertilization. External fertilization occurs outside the bodies of the parents. The female releases eggs into the water or attaches them to a plant or rock. The male then releases sperm cells over the eggs to fertilize them. Most frogs and fishes undergo external fertilization. The second mode of reproduction is asexual. Asexual reproduction does not need one male and one female parent to produce an offspring. A single parent organism simply makes identical copies of itself. Binary fission and budding are some methods of asexual reproduction. Binary fission occurs when a parent animal divides itself into two. Each half grows into a new individual. It is also called splitting. Some very small animals and certain marine animals reproduce through this method. The sea anemone can reproduce by binary fission. It splits its polyp or body into halves. Then it grows into two new sea anemones. Budding happens when an outgrowth of the parent animal bulge appears on the parent's body, grows into a bud, and eventually becomes a miniature copy of the parent. The young continue to grow while still attached to the parent and eventually detaches when it is mature enough to survive by itself. Hydra and jellyfish are some examples of animals that can reproduce through budding. Are you amazed of our lesson today? Me too! That speaks how wonderfully God created all living things. Now let's proceed to our next activity. Do you want to play again? Great! In this activity, you are going to tell if the animal mode of reproduction mentioned is sexual or asexual. Are you now ready? Good! Number 1. Cow Correct! The answer is sexual. Number two, Hydra. What's your answer? Very good. It's asexual. Number three, Horse. What's your answer? Very good. It's sexual. Number four, Sea Anemone. What's your answer? Very good. It's asexual. Number five, butterfly. Yes, you're right. The answer is sexual. Congratulations, kids. You are doing great. Our next activity is about the characteristics of sexual and asexual reproduction. You are going to tell if it is sexual or asexual depending on the description of the statement given. Are you ready? That's great! Number 1. 
It involves two sex cells, sperm and egg. The answer is sexual. Number two, it needs only one parent to reproduce. The answer is asexual. Number three, it undergoes cell division to produce an offspring. The answer is asexual. Number four, it undergoes fertilization when sperm and egg cells join. The answer is sexual. Number five, it has no sex cells. The answer is asexual. Excellent, kids! You did great! Our next activity is about ways on how to prevent extinction of animals. On your paper, you are going to put a check if it shows prevention of extinction of animals and put an X if not. Are you now ready? Great! Number one, hunting of wild animals. What's your answer? You're right. The answer is X because one of the effect is it will affect the food chain in the ecosystem. Number two, feeding of animals. The answer is check because it's a way of taking care of them. Just make sure that what you feed will not harm them. Number three, awareness campaign. What's your answer? Correct. It's a check because people will know what's happening in our natural resources. Number four, adopting homeless animals. The answer is check. Number five, dynamite fishing. What's your answer? Correct. It's an X because it destroys animals in a vast area from fish eggs and plankton to whales, dolphins, and corals. Excellent, kids! You did great! Music 
What did you learn today? Admirable. I know you listened well. What is reproduction? Reproduction is the ability of a living thing to continue the existence of its kind. Sexual and asexual reproduction are the two ways on how animals reproduce. Sexual reproduction in animals occurs when the sex cells, the egg cell and the sperm cell of two parent animals unite to form a new organism. Fertilization takes place when a sperm cell unites with the egg cell. It may be internal or external. Internal fertilization takes place when the male animal releases sperm cells into the body of the female animal to fertilize the egg cell. External fertilization takes place when the union of the egg cell and the sperm cell occurs outside the body of the female animal. A sexual reproduction needs one parent to produce an offspring. Some of its methods are binary fission and budding. Number 1. How does sexual reproduction happens in animals? A. When sperm cell and egg cell unite. B. When two sperm cells unite with one egg cell. C. When two sperm cells unite with two egg cells. D. When sperm cells unite with another sperm cell. The answer is... Letter A. Number 2. Which of the following organisms can reproduce through binary fission? A. Sea anemone. B. Frog. C. Fish. D. Lizard. The answer is... Letter A, it's C, anemone. Number 3, this process happens when the sperm cells are released into the body of the female and become fertilized. A, asexual reproduction. B, external fertilization. C, internal fertilization. D, incubation. The answer is... Letter C, internal fertilization. Number four, which animal reproduce by laying eggs? A, cow. B, lion. C, hydra. D, turtle. The answer is letter D. Turtle. Number 5. It is a type of reproduction by which offspring arises and inherits the genes of the parent. A. Sexual. B. Budding. C. Asexual. D. Fertilization. The answer is B. Budding. How many correct answers did you get? If you got five, very good. Three or four, good. Two and down, cheer up. You can study again this lesson and do better. For your assignment, make a research about the life cycle of a butterfly. Draw it in a bond paper and indicate the development in each stage. Today, 
we'll learn about the different modes of reproduction in animals. I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from today's lesson. I would like to share what Francis Bacon said. Keep on wondering, for it is the seed of science. Again, I am Teacher Joyce. Thank you! Teacher Joyce for giving us a clear understanding about reproduction. We have learned that reproduction is a biological process by which new individuals are produced by parents. We also learned that the known methods of reproduction are broadly grouped into main types, sexual and asexual reproduction. Did you find it interesting? For sure you did! Thank you for staying with us and continuously tuning in. We have learned about the discussion on specialized structure of terrestrial and aquatic plants and the different modes of reproduction in animals such as butterflies, mosquitoes, frogs, cats, and dogs, which was discussed clearly by the two enthusiastic teachers. It is a great honor to be part of your learning. I am encouraging you to give feedback and suggestions that will help us improve the next episode of Rajwara Lansanaga Season 2. Hope that all of you enjoyed listening and watching. Join us again tomorrow, December 2, as we discover and unfold something in the past in a fun-filled discussion in Araling Panlipunan 4 and 5. Allow me to acknowledge the people behind this Radio Aralan Sanaga Season 2. For without them, this episode wouldn't be possible. To Deped Naga City, headed by Sir Mariano B. De Guzman, CESA 6, Schools Division Superintendent. Dr. Cesar C. Ferro, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Annalisa F. Abulo, OIC CID Chief, Dr. Renato L. Gavino, SGOD Chief, Ma Maria Bilen Q. Lurcha, Education Supervisor of Science, to Sir John Dito Motorgo, Education Supervisor of Araling Panlipunan and Division Radio Base Instruction Coordinator, and the whole staff of Radio Aralan Sanaga Season 2. To Ma Marilyn B. Tosok, the RBI Technical Working Group Overall Chairman, Ma Verna Lisi Nogna, the District RBI Coordinator, Ma'am Esmeralda B. De Los Reyes, our school principal, and the Triangolo Elementary School RBI team, Teacher Christy J. G. Colaway, our school RBI coordinator, Teacher Mary Rose B. Paro, chairman of the technical working group, and Teacher Fatima M. Vialma, member of the technical working group. The writers of the modules used by our radio teachers, Ma'am Catherine D. Yarte for Science 4, Quarter 2, Week 4, Ma'am Shalom O. Lozana, Master Teacher 1 of Baligang Elementary School, Kamalik South for Science 5, Quarter 2, Week 3. We would also like to thank our station partner, 103.1 Brigada News FM Naga, headed by Kim Riolo, Station Manager, the people behind the official soundtrack of Radio Aralan Sanaga, Marilyn B. Tosok for the voice, music and jingle, Eugene J. Agor for the lyrics, Eliazar Francis A. Fernandez for the music and vocals, and Christine R. Fernandez for the vocals. This is Teacher Manette A. Guadalupe, your radio host for today, leaving you with the saying by Jill Abramson, We human are resilient. We can learn to thrive in new normal if we have the mindset and the resources we need to adopt. Until next time, keep safe everyone! Bye! Yung na
pakinggan ang mga learning episodes. Magutuwa kami na kayo ay nakasama sa talakayan ng tampok na mga aralin sa araw na ito. Hangad namin ang inyong pagkatuto. Hanggang sa muli, sa ganitong oras dito sa Radyo Aralan sa Naga Season 2. sa bagong normal Tila baga walang matakbuhan sa iyong mga katanungan Pag-aalala ay maiiksan narito na ang kasagutan Programa sa radyo iyong pakinggan para sa dagdag karunungan Now the prize is going live in 5, 4, Radyo, aralan sa naga Tara, pakinig ka na Radyo, aralan sa naga Handa na sa pagsimula Radyo, aralan sa naga